right, we're here at a warehouse going to show the high-tech system on repairing joints, filling joints, utilizing our uh, small FX for cracks, our small TX products for fixing spalls, and our polyurea uh, PE85, which is typical what we use in a warehouse. So if you take a look here, this is a typical small warehouse where the joint has some damage that's starting to occur. Right here, right here, we have a spall that's starting to occur. As, as we walk down this joint, you'll see more and more damage right here. That's because the joint hasn't been filled with a joint filler. Here's a, another area that has to be fixed because the forklifts that drive over these joints are now damaging the concrete edges. We need to repair these with our Spall TX product, recut the joint, and fill it with our PE85. So we're going to show you all those methods here uh, in this warehouse. Before we're going to fill these joints with our joint filler, we're going to fix these spalls first. And our best product that we make to fix spalls is our TX product line. We package it in, in the bulk form in different sizes. This right here is our one gallon kit. We have a built-in reservoir. This is the B side. This is the A side. It's a one-to-one -one ratio product. This is the two gallon kit, gallon of A, excuse me, gallon of B, gallon of A. It's always best to mix this product using sand. We find 30 grit dry silica sand works best. It makes the product stronger, it makes it more controllable. So the first thing that we need to do before we start to use our TX product line to fix this is we've got to do the proper prep. The types of tools that we want to have out here, uh, we want to make sure that we chisel out the concrete if we can. If not, we have a nice diamond blade here with a vacuum set up. And after we've got it all uh, installed and, and cleaned out, that's, that's when we go ahead and uh, put our high-tech TX product with our sand as a repair. Now we have our spalls around the joints cleaned out. We've chipped out the loose debris, we vacuumed it out, it's nice and dry. So we're going to go ahead and fix the spalls along the joint. One good trick to make sure that we don't lose our repair product down the joint is to take back a rod and shove it into the joint on either side of the repair. And this is a typical problem in a T-joint or a cross joint where we have a lot of repair that needs to be done. So I'm damming it up around the side there. Now we're ready to go ahead and start mixing some of our small TX material. I want you to notice that I brought out our one gallon kit that has these measuring devices on the side as well as our two gallon kits here in the back. I'm going to go ahead and use these uh, one gallon kits because they're uh, nice and easy on a small job like this. First thing you must do is shake up the B side because it needs to have the pigment re-blended. I brought out an older container that had been sitting for a while and I want you to notice how much pigment there is at the bottom and when I start to shake it, there's a tremendous amount of pigment that needs to come up from the bottom. So every time out on a job, you must shake the B side to make sure that you've shaken all the pigment in. What works best with these one gallon kits is to grab it by the proportioning neck, shake it this way. Once you have this shaken up, it takes about 20, 30 seconds or so. Then you want to take the cap off of the vial, start to squeeze it, and you'll notice you're able to start to measure it. I'll measure up uh, to a certain level. Then I'll come over to the A side. The A side does not have to be shaken because it does not have pigment in it. I'm going to equalize the amount of the A side. Then I go ahead and grab a completely separate container and I pour the product into it. Got the B in there. 
Remember, it's one-to-one -one ratio. And this reason why I really like our TX product line is because it has zero smell. There's no VOC. So you could be working inside of any type of a store at night with other store employees and nobody ever smells it. Now that I've got the equal amount of A and B in here, I'm mixing this up first for about 20 seconds. And then I've chosen to, to add 30 grit sand, dry silica sand, very easy to find at Home Depot, Lowe's, any, any of the building material supply stores. Go ahead and add your 30 grit sand to the consistency that you think you need. You can make it thick, you can make it thin. Just keep adding sand. The sand does a couple of things. It adds volume to the product, makes it more controllable, and also makes it a higher compressive strength. So when we add sand, it gets up to close to about 4,300 PSI compressive strength. I'm gonna go ahead and get over to the uh, repair and show you it's very, very simple. Keep stirring it, make sure the sand is completely blended and then just simply feed it into the area like that. Strike it off. Now let's move down the line here. Let me show you another area that we've got prepped. Ready? Very simple. It's got the consistency of uh, thick milk, I mean uh, thick malt. Just go ahead and feed that in. Now, I brought a little bit of sand with me and I'm going to grab that because I want you to notice that as the product sits a little bit, it, it develops a little wetness on the top. I throw the sand on top to make sure that sand is completely throughout the repair. Let's move back to the first one that we did. You'll notice how much liquid is at the top. By spreading the sand on it, when we go to grind it down flush, we're going to see a nice consistent repair. If I did not do this, you might see some shiny spots with it. So anyway, now we're going to let this set. It's going to take about 20 minutes for it to be completely set, cured, ready to uh, grind. One, one trick I also want to mention is I brought some uh, dry cement out here. If for some reason this slab was darker than what you're, norm, what you're used to or to what color our TX will cure to, you can simply add the cement to the TX and darken it. So it's a real easy trick out on a job. If you ever start finding the repair doesn't look quite dark enough for a very, very dark concrete floor, use cement and it'll, it'll cause it to be cure much darker. All right, I'm gonna show you a technique that's used when we have very small pop-outs, bug holes out on a, a floor. This is a process that can be done with using our TX product line. It's very, very simple. I showed you before we shook up our B-side. I'm gonna measure a little bit again. And this is a method where you're not spending a whole lot of time mixing and, and going along the, the, the floor. You're able to utilize a empty ketchup bottle. And I'll show you how this is done. You measure out equal parts A and B, pour it directly into the ketchup bottle. I'm not doing much out here because I don't have very many of these small holes. Pour your equal amounts A and B. Then you want to go ahead and add some sand. Now if, you're, if your bug holes are really, really small, you don't need any sand, but out here I know I've got some uh, breakouts around this joint that we're repairing that are a little larger, so I'm going to go ahead and use the sand. Put your top back on, put your thumb on it, and start shaking it up. Basically, I'm just blending it right inside the, uh, the bottle. And then you're able to go along the floor and fill in with our repair product. Now remember, I'm just repairing along the joint here, so this is what I've got to, to work with. But it's, it's very simple. You just squirt it in, so now I'm not bothering pouring it out of the container. I'm just squirting it in. And this works great if you've got small repairs to do all over along the floor. Now remember I told you before that it's a good idea to sprinkle a little bit of sand on the top if, it's, if it looks wet, which this does, so that when we go and grind it down flush, it'll be a nice consistent looking repair. So that's a real fast technique. You saw how fast that was. I can just go along and fill these and that's a great way to do a lot of small bug holes on the floor. Okay, it's been about 20, 25 minutes or so. We've allowed our high-tech small TX2 product to cure. This is the product we use the sand with. 
uh, to, to make it thicker and make it a little bit stronger. There's many different ways to profile this down. I'm using a portable handheld uh, dust-free system with the shroud. I'm using a Zec wheel with a seven inch grinder. Helps it blend in very, very nicely. All right, we've gone ahead and repaired the uh, damaged joint area of the spalls with our high-tech spall TX2 with the sand. We've gone ahead and ground it smooth. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut open the joint, we're gonna clean it open. Just like I said before, the preparation is very, very important. So before we put our, our PE85 product in this joint, we've gotta cut out the material. So we're gonna use a dust-free system here.